Well, I think it's, you know, it has been a huge, huge leap forward in terms of analysis of games. Uh, I'm a big believer in match analysis because I started doing it in mid 90s, probably before most of your listeners were born. And I used things like VHS tapes and a pencil yeah. and a pen and a paper, which you know, the lads nowadays would laugh at. But yeah. the reason I started was I was coaching goalkeepers, national team goalkeepers in Australia. And I, I thought, well, why do we do this practice? Is it realistic? I thought, well, how are goals scored? How are shots on target? If I can replicate that in training, therefore, I, you know, it's better for me goalkeepers. So yeah. I did that. I analysed where goals came from. And then I suddenly realised that if this practice for goalkeepers is also going to be very good for strikers because they're practising how goals are going to be coming. And I, and I basically found what happened then still happens now. 80% of goals come from inside the penalty box. They're one touch or two touch. It's very, very rare. You know, there's always going to be free goals from outside the pitch or great dribbles. It happens, but the bread and butter of football is that 35 to 40% of goals come from set pieces. Yeah. So I worked out thinking, well, what can you do? So I thought all my practices were involved with inside the penalty box, one touch and two touch for the striker. The goalkeeper had to react to that. Then I realised as I got became more, rather than coaching keepers, coaching the, the team, that you've got to get as many players into the box as you can. You've got to get the ball into the box as often as you can. Yeah. And vice versa, keep the ball out of your box. You know, that's the most, closing down people crossing the ball is such a magnificent skill, which doesn't get, you know, talked about a lot. Uh, you know, if you watch the teams, Oh, they, they got the ball in the box, the player was unmarked. Yeah, well, if you can stop the cross coming in, you, mm-hmm. you stop happening anyway. So I think that's really important. I watched Man City against Southampton recently, mm-hmm. and the left mm-hmm. back from Man City pouring balls in. The Southampton defenders were fantastic. They were getting the clearances. But if they could have stopped the crosses, it would have mm-hmm. reduced you know, the pressure on them. So, you know, I think that was re- really important. But as it's evolved, though, what I... What I've found is that it's become too complicated. And I found there's been an over-analysis. I had a wonderful phrase, paralysis by analysis. Yeah. Because I've had stuff sent to me which is totally unusable. Now, as a coach, I, 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 there's you know, only so much things I can use. Uh, and I don't want to be baffled I, you know, with, with some of the some of the phrases, you know, the, the, the half space, and yeah. the, vertical penetration. There's a whole vocabulary come up, which is something totally irrelevant. Uh, and I, I don't have the time. I, I remember a game I was coaching at Lau in the, in the World Cup qualifiers against Korea. And I got a report given to me by a, by a company that wanted to meet to end a buying analysis. And it was 28 pages. Yeah. Now, I didn't have time to read 28 pages because I had another game coming up quick. and. Some of it was just, you know, and in the end, the, the analyst who'd done it off a, off a com- computer hadn't, wasn't at the game, said our game plan had failed. Well, our game plan didn't fail. We didn't have a game plan because Korea were better than us. They were physically better. Mm-hmm. They were technically better. They were better footballers. You know, we just hung on. Uh, and he said, like, we didn't do this when we had the ball. We were delighted when we got the ball. <laughs> you know, <that's- laughs> The, didn't get the ball. Their keeper never touched the ball till the 28th minute, you know, because okay. we never got the ball. Um, mm. We were hanging on by our fingernails. We were physically breathing you know, our, our guts out. I was delighted that we kept the score down to about three after 60 minutes. I knew after 60 minutes we were going to die because we were up against lads who were playing in the EPL, the Bundesliga, the, the yeah. Chinese, and our lads were semi pros from the Lao League. So we yeah. physically couldn't handle it. So, and this bloke's telling me my game plan didn't work. Well, <laughs> you know, he's got to be realistic about what you can do as a coach. And yeah. some of the technical things he talked about were absolute fiction. Mm-hmm. We didn't do this. 
we didn't do that. You know, uh, it didn't happen. And so what, what I wanted, when I, when I send an analyst out, I want to know to scout a team, really, or a player. But <clears throat> when I scout a team, I want them to know the shape of the team, what they're playing. Are they playing 4-4-2, you 3-5-2? Know, uh, I want to know their set pieces, because 40% of them are there, are, do they do any special set pieces? Are they good players in it? Are, are there any particular star players? Usually you know that anyway. And mm-hmm. are also, are there any general patterns of play? Like, I I, I, I coached a game, I, I coached Thailand against uh, Saudi. Mm-hmm. And, in, and, and I spoke with Peter Reed, who was our manager, and, and I said to him, they will play a box midfield, which is basically 4 2 2 2. Yeah. And so the key will be we've got to stop their fullbacks because if they if we stop their fullbacks, they'll have no width. They'll just be clogged up down the middle and we'll have a chance. And we did that. We played we played a 4 4 2 and we had, had our wide midfielders pushing on to their fullbacks and that stopped their fullbacks getting that. Now we got big 2 0 because they were better than us, but it kept it realistic and we were in with a chance. Uh, right. I, in a sense, just doing something slightly tactical, not major comple- complexity, uh, just a small tactical switch. You know, rather than the, the midfielders dropping into midfield, they pushed right up. It was almost became a 4-2-4. Uh, mm-hmm. in and that allowed us to, to get away, you know, with a good result. So that that's what I want from the analyst. I want useful information, stuff that I can, you know, is a player all left foot. Uh, we saw the other day, um, Yarmenko scored for West Ham against mm-hmm. Chelsea. Now, Chelsea there, they, I'm sure their analysts have done their homework, that he's all left footed. So you push the guy down, the, he's on the right hand side, you've got to push him down the right wing, not yeah. let him come inside and shoot. And uh, Rudiger, did the opposite. He almost allowed him inside, and that to me is somebody who either hasn't listened to the analyst, or the analyst hasn't done his job. Not picked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so great. that to me is where the game has changed. Uh, there's better analysis. The use of computers obviously is great. The distances people run, that's important mm-hmm. as well. I think, though, the trade-off is, you know, are they running sensibly? Uh, mm-hmm. That's the next thing. If you run 12 kilometers or seven, are they a quality seven? Better than mm-hmm. a pointless 12. Uh, possession, I mean, all the possession points to not very much to it, to be honest, because I look at, if you look at Barcelona, well, yes, they have great possession because most teams drop off. So mm-hmm. they keep the ball and they're pinging about in their own back third, even in the middle third. Mm-hmm. So they gain great percentage on possession, but it's not important. To me, the important possession is, is in their final third. That, yeah. That's important. And I recently read like Bruno Fernandes of Man United. He was criticized for his possession because his pass rate wasn't that good. Well, the reason his passing rate wasn't that good because he tries something special. He tries great through balls, dangerous through balls, which yeah. sometimes get put off by good defenders rather than someone who plays at the back and knocks it around, like PK, Ramos, who, you know, yeah. can't blame them. So it, possession has got to be quality possession, what mm-hmm. you do with the possession and where you do it. That, that's the important thing. How you interpret possession it, it, is, I think, a key. An analyst can give me certain facts and figures, but a quality analyst will tell me uh, your, when that possession is useful. Okay. Perfect, coach. I think you well put it up. Uh, many times we go overboard in trying to get more information, but what is important is to get the right information. It's going to be useful for the coach if yeah. I put that in the right way. Because right. basically, I get sacked, you don't. That's being quite blunt. You know, yeah, the analyst yeah. stays there because he's paid by the club. But if the players, if they lose, it's the coach's fault, and I'm the one that gets sacked. So yeah. you know, that, that's welcome to the real world of football. Yeah, that, that's what it is, the real world. Yeah. That's true. That's right.